Greetings and salutations. Uh, my name is Retson Noor. That's an alias uh, because I'm part of the Ouroboros Inner Circle. And I'm going to have to explain what that is because most people probably have not heard that word before. The Ouroboros is an ancient symbol. It's the snake that's eating its tail. It's usually like a circle. So uh, I just wanted to mention that. So uh, we're going to talk today about the alternative society here. And this alternative society that I'm going to focus on is the homeless society. Now there are homeless people all over the place here and uh, we do have a number of people in the Amherst area here. They live behind a uh, big Y supermarket. There's like a tent city there of homeless people in the woods there. You see them walking back and forth all the time. One of the problems is uh, uh, the, uh, the cost of trying to get a place especially in a college town like uh, Amherst here. So I am uh, kind of uh, having a discussion with this homeless person. He may uh, uh, give you some information about stuff that he's been trying to uh, uh, take care of for himself. Uh, the uh, homeless people are all over the place here in this area here. So uh, I'm going to have him uh, discuss uh, the situation. I'm going to ask him some questions about it. Uh, uh, hello again. Uh, this is Retson Noor. I have my special guest here. I'm going to have you state your name. Bill Fabricini. Okay. And uh, we're uh, discussing uh, a situation that you're concerned about or you want to be... Uh, uh, talking about uh, because of a uh, situation that you're experiencing? Sure. Uh, well, about being homeless, uh, I, was, uh, I was evicted and, uh, and, and uh, what happened was I was, uh, first I was given a letter saying that I would not be, re my lease would not be renewed, but it was renewed and it was, and uh, not only was I recertified, my knee, my I got a new lease two years in a row after that, and then they, they kicked me out. You know, uh, uh, they really had no reason to kick me out. The reason they did was because I tried to make some changes to help the people that live there. You know, they don't wanna. What they wanted to do is get rid of the people that try to help those people, uh, so that they can keep doing the same thing over and over. That's what that's what it's about. That's why I got they got rid of me. That's the real reason. Okay. Well, uh, these people are uh, hired to uh, do a certain job, and they probably felt that that was in their uh, their job. Uh, I forgot what you call it. You, well, you, you know, they probably thought that they were going to save money, or you know, they usually uh, these are the things they think about money. They don't real they don't think about people at all. No. Just uh, you know, even these places where they have uh, uh, where they have these uh, uh, you know places uh, shelters and also places to eat, they don't do that for for us. They do that for them. That way, they can say, "Well, he's being he's being taken care of." You know, don't worry about him. He's being taken. Care of. That's what, that's the way they are. Okay. Well, uh, I've uh, heard. Uh information on National Public Radio. They've uh, talked about this on radio as well oh, as yeah. television. Oh, yeah. uh, and uh, the radio had a series about it. I just happened to hear one, I think it was five programs about the homeless. Uh, yeah. And they gave examples. Now the example that I heard on the radio was about New Orleans, that they had a, a difficulties uh, with the homeless in New Orleans. and. Uh, they did an aggressive uh, thing uh, to deal with the homeless. They didn't uh, just uh, let the whole thing uh, just drop. They ag aggressively tried to get uh, help for people. They gave an example of some lady that was homeless for 10 years. And uh, 
They mm -hmm. showed her a picture of the uh, place that they got for her, and she said, oh, well, it looks pretty interesting, and so she got a place to stay. But that's New Orleans now. And, uh, this well, is... they, they, they have the same problem in California. They got the problem everywhere. They got tent cities everywhere. Uh, you know, it's a big problem, and they made the problem. And, uh, you know, they really need to think about uh, home, home, pe uh, pe people being home, having a home as as a, uh, a a human right. You know, that's the way they should think about it. It was just on the radio for a whole hour Sunday morning from about uh, from about six to uh, seven in the morning, Sunday morning. Uh, and that uh, what's what's today? Today is the sixteenth, the seventeenth. Yeah, this last Sunday. And, uh, yeah, a whole hour they talked about how terrible the, uh, the corruption is. Uh, in this. You know, the reason I got in, involved in trying to uh, change things and everything is because just before President Obama left office, he got on television and he said that, uh, that there's a, a lot of corruption, and because of that, there's a very negative effect on society. And I wanted to help him. I wrote him a letter to tell him I wanted to help him. He wrote me back. I uh, wrote to John Lewis, who's a senator, who was marched with Martin Luther King. And uh, that's when Obama wrote me back. Uh, you know, it really needs to stop. Uh, you know, I've... Uh, I sent letters to everybody. I've done and certified letters. You know, uh, I've had problems with all of the government programs. There's a lot of corruption. It's deep. It's very deep. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, I'm still having problems. And that's the reason why I want this. You know, I want to help change society for the better. I don't want to hurt anybody. It's not what it's about. It's about helping people. And they really don't want to help people. All they care about is uh, money or something, you know, kind of like maybe uh, a president or something. Well, okay. Well, uh, one of the situations uh, that's uh, a homeless uh, cause is the high cost of uh, living. Usually you have to have the first and last month's rent as well as a security deposit. And most people don't have that kind of money to get a... Uh, a regular a place. Well, so. I always paid my rent. You know, I always paid it, and uh, never did I not pay it. You know, uh, and uh, you know, I never had no problem with that. No, no problem at all with that. And as a matter of fact, I was on the up and up. You know, uh, they got rid of me because I wanted to help the people that were living there. They said that they wanted to make room for the new people to come in to help but they weren't helping people that, that are there. They're not helping the people that are there. Now, you are referring to Springfield, Massachusetts. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah, that's true. That's because true. you said that you were living in Springfield, that's right. Massachusetts. You're right. You're right. I'm surprised that you like to be out in this Amherst area. You have to uh, take the bus back and forth. Well, you know, I come back and forth a lot. You know, uh, it's not so much that there's a need. I have a... I, I have a um, a storage bin where I keep my stuff, you know, so there's a need for me to do that. Okay, well, I, I think I had seen one of these uh, so-called uh, homeless people coming from the storage area in Amherst, and I was uh, thinking to myself, I wonder if he was uh, actually living in the storage unit. Do you... Well, they'll kick you out of there. You know what happens is uh, some people will stay in there, and they kept, they kicked me out of there. I was staying in there, and what happens is you you turn the you turn the 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 thing in and then lock it you you you, you lock it you, you from you the outside it, yeah from the outside you lock it so that you can't you can't close it right so that you can't close it or else somebody could put a lock on it and you're in that's it you okay. know okay uh, and they drive by they see it like that and they they kick you out you know they find out if you're in there or not and they just kick you out. And I got kicked out of there for, for staying in there. But I don't stay in there no more. Since uh, July, I, I haven't been in there.
But uh, if you uh, get out of there before they come to work, don't they usually come to work like 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning if you leave like at 6 o'clock well, in the they, morning? Well, the thing of it is, is they can check it at night. Police do too, you know, uh, security reasons. Uh, police check them. So uh, you're saying that they have the security they cameras. they got people that tell on you, you know, too, you know. You know, you got to be, you got to stay to yourself because... Everybody, that's why that's why a lot of people they ask me where I, where I live I say I can't tell you because somebody will come over and say you can't stay here that's the way they are they don't, don't only like to knock you down they like to kick you while you're down it's, okay. I'm just telling the truth this is the truth okay well uh, I'm kind of interested in this uh, uh, alternative society that I'm calling uh, the homeless population yeah, and uh, uh, I'm kind of thinking to myself, this actually might be a utopian society because you don't have to pay rent, uh, you don't have to pay for heat, uh, it's you're no, free as a bird. It's you don't, not free. It's not. Uh, it's no. It's, 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 they do this to try and weaken you, soften you up, to get you to do whatever they want you to do. That's the reason they do it, and a lot, it happens all the time to a lot of people. The reason that they aren't able. There's two reasons that they aren't able to soften me up, and one of them is that I've been through this for, before for three years, uh, back in 2009 when we made a movie, uh, um, 2000, I think it was 2010, Alternative American was the name of it. And uh, they just played it a couple, a couple of weeks ago on uh, 57. But the whole thing it is is this. You know, uh, they, what were we talking about just now? <laughs> what were we talking about just now? You're talking about that you were uh, back in uh, 2009. Okay, yeah, 2009, three years I stayed homeless for three, th three years. So I got an education, you know. That's one of the things. And then now I go to the gym every day, so that's another thing that helps me. You know, uh, I actually uh, am better at it today than I was then, you know. Uh, they can't hurt me, but, you know, that's what they want to do. They want to hurt people. <laughs> And that way, they can do whatever they want with them. What they usually do is try to treat you like a little kid. You know, uh, set, uh, to ask me if I'd like to uh, go to a uh, old folks home, you know, a senior citizens home or something, you know, so that they can make decisions for me. <laughs> they say, well, that's for your own good, but you know, it's for their own good is what it's for. Uh, that's the truth. They do it for their own uh, benefits, not yours. Okay, well, uh, I'm guessing you're over the age of 65. Oh, sure, I'm 69 years old, but I'm in good shape. I, I go to the gym every day. I'm in good shape. Okay, well, I'm a little more curious about this homeless situation that... Uh, I've been homeless since June. Uh, I've been all winter outside. Okay, so uh, I'm kind of curious about this. I'm guessing that you might have a top that you have and then you said you have a sleeping bag and a yeah, blanket yeah. and you must have the top if it's snowing or something you have the yeah, top. Yeah, you, you gotta get underneath something. You, you, can't, have, you, can't, you, can't have, you can't have it raining on you but there's so many places that you can go to. There's so many places you can go that has an over overlapping roof, you know. So many. Uh, so it's kind of like a little secret place that you can go to. That's right. You go to a lot of different ones. You know? uh, they're it's probably terrible. around they're, for... They're everywhere. But now this group that's over in Amherst is a tent city behind the Big Y supermarket that... They uh, got them everywhere. They, uh, got them in, they got them in California. Like big, big tent cities out there in California. The problem is big everywhere, and they made the problem. Well, I'm guessing California is one of the most expensive places oh. to live, so that's not really unusual that they have a large homeless population. It's a cost of living in California. Well, what is it like? Uh, it's warm out there. It's they they, they go over there because of the weather, but when they find out that they can't afford to live there, I'm guessing they just go get a tent and go live out in the warm weather. Ten cities big out there, real big. Now, uh, I heard that uh, we had some severe storms like in Colorado and stuff, and I met a homeless person when I was out and about, and uh, I heard him say he came from Colorado. Uh, I see him my walking daughter, around. My daughter lives down there in North, North Carolina, and they had three feet of snow. They never had that before. 
Then they, they had, they just had Florence where there was floodwaters there, uh, and, uh, you know, her trailer was completely, uh, drowned and she had to, uh, save every, it was hard to save. A lot of the pictures and stuff are gone, but I mean, you know, she had to, it took time to, to straighten things out. Now, I bumped into a guy this morning on the bus, and he's had a tent set up down by the river because he wanted to be alone, you know, hiding in the woods down there by the river. And uh, the river's risen, and his tent is completely uh, gone. You know, everything is a... And this is a problem that they like. They make this problem for you. They like the reason, the, the, the fact that uh, you're having a tough time, and they hope that you come. And then they give you whatever little uh, crumbs that fall off the table, you know, and that's the way they want things, you okay, know, well, for their I, benefit. I'm guessing that you're making an assumption that they like uh, to do, and you use the word they, I mean, uh, that's uh, kind society, of... Society, society. They like it, and I'm not making an assumption, it's something that they enjoy doing. Okay. Uh, now, this uh, stuff that you were mentioning about your daughter, you, you do have a family? Yeah, I got a daughter and I got two uh, grandchildren. Uh, of course, you know, uh, I would never want to live down there. It's terrible down there. You got all, all uh, dirt roads and uh, rundown, uh, logs in the middle of the road, uh, no grass. Uh, it's really uh, uh, terrible uh, terrain where they live. You know, it's like way out in the boonies. And it is far away from everything, and it's no place I would want to stay. So, but they, uh, they, they, they begged me to come down there. Oh, come down and stay here. <laughs> no way. Okay, well, yeah. now you mentioned that your daughter does live in a trailer. Is that what you said? Yeah, she lives in a trailer. And yeah. uh, so if somebody uh, called this uh, or ch contacted me, the Ouroboros Inner Circle at ProtonMail.com uh, had an email, and they said that, We'd like to offer you a trailer in one of the trailer parks here, such as uh, in Belchertown, or I saw a trailer park going at well, the Westfield. Well, well, you know, to accept something like that, I'll tell you something, Ron. To accept something like that, what happens is you forget about everything that they've done to you, and I don't want to do that. I want to make sure that I get them to court on that, and uh, we're going to talk about the 10 months that I was in the cold and, uh, and the reasons for it, uh, you know. We're going to talk about all of this. It's going to come to, come to a head. So you're uh, planning on uh, getting a lawyer and yes, uh, doing sir. something? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, this is uh, just for yourself, not for the homeless population well, in general? You know, well, you know, it, it benefits everybody. By, by me bringing it up and uh, talking about it, it benefits everybody. And when I get back to where I was, where I was living... Uh, I'll be able to talk about the things that I, that I was trying to talk about, and they, they didn't want to hear it, you know. Uh, they wanted to get rid of me. But uh, when they find out that they, it's not so easy to, to treat people like this, you know. Oh, okay, I, I have a question about this. Uh, sure. Generally, the lawyers charge something like $250 an I'm, hour I'm, and up. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm qual I qualify for... Uh, uh, for for a uh, reduced rate, which uh, can be seventy five dollars, can be a hundred dollars, can be one hundred fifty dollars, but I qualify for a reduced reduced rate, and I don't want a free lawyer because they don't work for you; they work for the other side. I want to pay. I want to pay for the lawyer, and you know, being homeless uh, it helps me to save some money in that direction. I don't eat out a uh, different place. I don't eat at any at any of these uh, food places. I, I, uh, I buy my own food. You know, and sometimes I cook it over at uh, I heat it up in a, over there at the uh, Whole Foods or something like that. You know, but I mean I, I take care of myself, and uh, you know uh, because they don't care about you, Ron. They really don't care about you. They they say they do, but it's for them. It's not for you. Okay, well, I need to uh, mention uh, the fact about my own experience because uh, I rented out rooms in my house from 1974 to 2014, and a lot of these people were homeless people. Yeah. I did not get along with 90% of these people. They had either alcohol problems, yeah. drug problems, yeah. psychological problems, yes. uh, money problems, yeah. uh, well, you know, all kinds of problems that you know, they were experiencing, and I, I, I had difficulties dealing with these well, people. You know, I understand you, Ron. 
you make a lot of sense. I understand that that can be a problem. But you should know about that before you take them in. But the whole thing is, is this. Where I live is the biggest, where I was living, I mean, you know, uh, Friends of the Homeless, is the biggest uh, substance abuse problem in all of Springfield. Nobody's worse, you know. They have a big problem with that. And for four years, more than four years, I was trying very hard, very hard to, to get uh, two AA meetings a week going there to, to, with the... With the, the uh, with the uh, uh, executive director standing in the way. You know, he, he, he didn't want it. He, he didn't want it. So we got NA. They got three NA meetings there and, uh, and not one AA meeting. Well, you know, I, 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 although I was a heroin addict and I had a $100 a day habit and I went to prison, state's prison for it, I've been sober 30, 30 years now and I got sober in AA. That's where I got sober. Because it's a better program, in my opinion. It's they, anybody will tell you that it's the best program. It's the mother program. It's where everything else came from, including uh, Gamblers Anonymous and all of those, Cocaine's Anonymous, all of those came from that program. They, they took it from it. Uh, you know, listen, I can't stand the mafia. Uh, they, they bring in the drugs. The kids are all killing each other, you know, uh, it's a very serious problem. Uh, Obama came up with a billion dollars to do something about it. Even the, even Trump, who I really don't care for, is trying to do something about it, you know? And, uh, you know, uh, the way I see it is this. I've been sober for 30 years. I'm half Italian. I want to be proud of something. Okay. You know? Yeah. Uh, well... And every Italian isn't the mafia. Every Puerto Rican is not a Latin king. Every black person is not a, the Bloods. And those people, believe it or not, really don't want to be associated with anybody like that. And I don't either. I really don't want to talk to anybody. If, he, if I know he's a mafia, <laughs> I find something, a real reason I have to leave. Okay, well, yeah. I'm going to get back to my own experience because uh, the majority of people that I rented out to... Uh, uh, were uh, homeless people. As a matter of fact, one of the uh, people that came over to my house came over from the homeless shelter in Northampton. And he actually was one of my best tenants. I, I, I liked the guy because uh, there was not really much problems with him. He came to the house and he went in his room. He stayed in his room. That's what I kind of liked. I didn't like people uh, kind of hanging around and doing you. stuff there in a house there. I don't uh, blame you. And like I said, I had all kinds of people living in the house there. Uh, one one of the tenants I didn't particularly like because he'd have uh, people coming around uh, late at night or early in the morning. Somebody could be knocking at the door at 5 a.m. I'm wondering what's going on. And my, my other uh, tenant that was there told me he saw that he had crack cocaine uh, there. I don't know if he was selling it or yeah. using it. I don't know what the it's problem was. It's a terrible was. problem today. You know, the drugs is a big, big problem today. So the I, kids are dropping off like flies. They're dropping off like flies, right? Right. Well, I, uh, I realize that uh, a lot of these homeless people do have uh, problems with uh, uh, drugs, and I think that's one of the reasons why they're homeless. But uh, uh, in my opinion, uh, they could set up some kind of uh, situation. For example, I had got a magazine that uh, I was looking at uh, different types of houses because uh, I happen to live in a house now. Uh, I have a house, but I have no heat in the house because uh, I can't really afford the heat. I have a mortgage payment and a car payment. You know, so, uh, the problem with the Friends of the Homeless is that they their way of dealing with the problem of alcoholism, which is a, a disease, and it's not a moral issue, it's something that uh, is affected. If the Pope had a problem with, with drugs, he'd steal from the poor box. He would. You know, uh, it's not a moral issue. What it is is a, a, a serious problem that really needs to be treated. And, you know, their, their treatment for, for uh, drug-dependent persons is kick them out put them on the doorstep. That does not treat the problem. You know, what they should do is get them into rehab, rehabilitation, 
two AA meetings a week, like I've been, try been trying right. to do, you know, where you can talk to these people and say, look, uh, you know, uh, I had the problem. And that's how, that's the thing that recovers people. When you tell people, look, I had the problem. I had a hundred dollar a day habit. I ended up in state's prison for it and I'm 30 years sober. Wow, it can happen. Because these people aren't enjoying their lives, really. Once they get hooked, it's not fun no more. It's it's something that they can't do without, you know. Right. And uh, you know they'll do it. They, you know, the, what the, what the friends of the homeless like about these people is uh, is that they will do anything that they say because they they just leave me alone so I can do my drugs. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. I'll uh, I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll make sure that the. Uh, uh, the garbage is out, everything, anything, just as long as I can do my drugs, you know. That's what they like about these people. What they need to do is help them, help them get straightened out. You know? Well, uh, like I mentioned, they did have a series on National Public Radio. Unfortunately, I could only hear oh, one of the programs about I had Newton. To have, I had the problem for years. I know a lot about it. Okay. Uh, I had the problem for years. They, uh, so a lot of times depends on the community too. They, some communities are more aggressive with dealing with uh, the homeless people than others. It depends on the community. So yeah. maybe Springfield right. might not be in the top 10. They might be in the middle somewhere. I'm sure that there's a homeless situation well, friend, just about anywhere. Friends of the homeless, uh, their idea of handling the problem is to give it to somebody else. That's their idea of, uh, of handling the, the problem of alcoholism, which they have a big problem over there. It's bigger than any place else in Springfield. But they don't, they, they don't have the right attitude. They want, they they feel like it's some kind of a moral issue. Well, you know, they're, they're doing wrong or something. What they need to do is get these people some help. They need to be helped. Helped. Not, okay. Not well, uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, there's programs to try to help people. Yeah, oh, yeah. I and, actually have and they, a... And, a they have, and they have AA everywhere, you know. It's not like they don't have AA around there. It's everywhere. But if it was there, you know, Ron, the... the, the uh, the, it would be in their face all the time, and uh, there would just be when usually pain is what causes the people to get recovery, you know. And if if the if the AA meetings are going on all the time, and you're you're there at the right time, you say, hey, look, why don't you come to this meeting with me? You know, and uh, that's where it starts. And by looking at somebody like me or somebody that's been sober for a long time, that. You know, it, 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 that that's what the, that's the thing that, that causes the people to keep coming, you know. And people fall down, of course, because like I said, it's a disease, but they get up and they try. And if you got somebody there that's uh, putting on the meetings and that's uh, been through it, you know, uh, uh, the, the, those are the people that, that are needed. Those, those are the people that are needed to keep the, keep, keep the people coming, you know. Okay, I have uh, some more questions sure, for sure. you here. So, sure. uh, now you seem to be kind of preoccupied with Springfield, but there's places like Amherst that has uh, uh, resources. I actually have a card here. It's Amherst yeah. Community yeah. Connections. Yeah. Everyone deserves a second chance. Yeah. Uh, what and is that, about? is that about relocating? And they have information here. Housing is the solution oh, to that, homelessness. I see. That's uh, that's relocation. What you're talking about? No. Well, well no. no. Let me finish no. talking okay. here. Okay. Uh, now uh, you're kind of interested in being in Springfield is it because the oh uh, wait a minute yeah. is it because there's the MGM casino and you'd prefer to be going to the casino I don't go to casinos never I've never been to one okay yeah. so there is an the MGM casino no. so I'm kind of thinking maybe people I've are never thinking been to one. I don't intend to ever I won't give them a nickel okay right. so uh, 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 what is the interest of the Springfield? The interest is that, uh, that uh, I was trying to get some help, help some, some of the people where I lived, and they, because of that, I was kicked out, and I want to get back to the exact place where I was, or maybe not the same room, but same place, and uh, continue to try and help the people that live there. So, you so know, it, the thing of it is, is this. I'm 69 years old now. I had a bad life 
and I uh, and they and they continue to try and give me a bad life. But uh, I want to help people before I die. These people, they don't care about nobody, and that's why uh, we're going to have to try and uh, straighten them out. You know what I mean? Somebody okay. needs to do it. Okay. Well, you keep saying, "quote these people," these and people, that's well, the Springfield you know, people. <clears throat> well, it's not it's only them. It's uh, people that are. It's usually the people running the show. They're not nice people, you know. Uh, the people that are running the show, people that uh, the corruption is very deep. It goes all the way to the judge, Brett Ronnie. Well, I'm deep. sure that uh, there's some kind of uh, a problem in any way that you go. I've seen. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, there's problems every way you go, but. Uh, uh, I like the problems of trying to do the right thing. Those are my problems that I like. Because I know I'm, uh, I'm, I'm happy with myself. I, look, I like myself for doing that. Uh, you know, uh, you, can, uh, you can go around treating people bad, you know, uh, but it's going to come back at you like that snake eating his uh, tail, you know. That's the Ouroboros. It's going to come back at you and bite you in the ass um, or the... Sorry about that. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so uh, if I give you this card here by Amherst Community it. Connections, you don't want it because you don't want to deal with no, the, the Amherst I'm thing. I'm not moving. You're not really no, interested. I'm not interested in moving. So uh, uh, this is uh, an attitudinal thing that you, it's either your way or the highway? Well, it was either their way or the highway. But now well, it's, but, no, uh, now if it's you my, get now it's my way. My way. Only, and okay. it's going to happen. So, uh, if you get an offer for a place, say, no. like in Northampton or something, no, you're not going to no. take it. I'm not taking any place anywhere except for back there, and I'm going to get that. Well, I'm going to bring them to court. Going to get that, and they're going to have to be uh, very apologetic for what they put me through. Okay. Very apologetic. Well, uh, maybe they'll be saying something in court that you might have some kind of mental problems oh, well, due to uh, your drug uh, use. Well, you know, they can say whatever they want to say, but I'm going to have a lawyer saying something to them. Their questions are going to be the ones that are going to be hard to answer. Mine's are easy. Okay. Well, uh, uh, I'm predicting in the future that actually robots are going to be taking the place of lawyers because the robots don't have like a, a yeah, well, an orientation. They just stick to the facts. Uh, well, right now, they're going to have to listen to a lawyer. They're going to be have to. Uh, they'll have to listen to a lawyer. So what you're saying is that uh, you're going to go after these people in Springfield uh, with uh, a lawyer well, and attorney. Yes. Paid and, attorney. And this is your goal in life is that you're going My to... My goal in life is to try and do, do something right and, uh, and to make these people accountable for their actions. Okay. Yes. So uh, and now this place in Springfield, where is it located? Uh, Worthington Street, 755 Worthington Street, Springfield. And you uh, wrote something to me and told me that you actually need to use a fingerprint in order to get into That's the, the building? Truth. That's the truth, you know. You have to use a, a fingerprint to get in the door to go into your, your room in the front door. Now, if you got a little dirt on your finger, it doesn't work. If it's cold, it doesn't work. If there's oil on there, it doesn't work. If you cut your finger or something, it won't work because it doesn't record it right. If there's dirt on the glass itself, it won't work. So people are having trouble getting in. And you know, let me tell you something. If you're a career criminal... It shouldn't matter if your rent's paid. You should be able to get in your room, you know. Uh, and these people, most of them are just drug addicts uh, or uh, alcoholics. They do have problems, yes. They're not being treated right about them. You know, they they can't even get in their door. So what happens is they, they, leave, they put something in the door to keep it open. And what does that do? It shuts down security completely. Anybody can get in. Okay. They say that it's there for security reasons. But... Because they put something in the door, anybody can get in there. Okay, so I have a question about that, too. Now, sure. they're trying to keep out the riffraff? That makes it easier for anybody to get in if they put something in the door. And the reason they put it in the door is because they can't get in. So, uh, say if somebody uh, doesn't have uh, authorization to they go made, in, they in... made a They made a problem is what they did. They made a problem. 
So it's not like open to all the homeless people, only some of the no, homeless just, people. No, just, uh, just the people that live in that building. You know? But there yeah. might be more homeless people wanting to get into the building. It could happen, yes. So how would they get in? If there's something in the door, they just open it. Well, how did, how did you get into that building? You had to get in by fingerprint. But I mean, before you did the fingerprint, how did you get into the building? Uh, I didn't. They had the fingerprint thing when I got there. So you had to go to like a, an office or something? You'd go to the office? No. Well, oh, you mean if you can't how did you, How did you get into this building in the first place? You had to sign up somewhere. It's okay. not like, a, oh, no. like the... Uh, you didn't the, have to sign up. What you did was you, 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 you took your... You, when, you, when you got the room, they had your fingerprinted. You used your fingerprint to get the door, to get in the, to, to open the door to go up to your room. Then you use your own key on your own door. Well, that's the way it was. Now, uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, they, if you can't get in your room and somebody puts something in there, anybody can get in there. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm kind of curious about... Uh, people getting established so that they can use that as a place to stay and so you must have gone to some kind of office I'm guessing some kind of office that you had to go to no I what you did was you went there and you got once once you were uh, first you first you're in the in, in your first you're in the uh, uh, the the homeless uh, shelter then you get a room when you get the room your fingerprinted now you can use that door okay to get up and they uh, give you a key for your door now they say that it's for security reasons but it <laughs> it, do, it doesn't I, really work no, that well it, no it's it's it works the it, it's counterproductive now uh can you bring a friend to your room and kind of sit my, around in, and... in the building that i was yes i never brought anybody there ever because i didn't trust the uh, the, the people that run the place right I figured they would probably put some drugs in there or something and say that, uh, well, he's got people going in there all the time. But nobody, not even my mother, ever went in my room, except okay. for people that worked there. Now, the people that worked there. Now, I rented out, like I said, for 40 years, and I rarely went inside uh, uh, the room that I rented out, I basically would leave notes on yeah. the door. Yeah, I was yeah, one yeah, of those. Yeah. I'd yeah. write a note and I said, uh, make sure that you pay uh, oh, by you know, Friday. I found letters inside my room. I don't know how they get there. You know, how, do, how can I prove they get there? You know, uh, uh, they could open a door and put it there. The, the letter was found inside my room, you know. Uh, you know, uh, nobody's got any right going inside your room. And I have proof that uh, twice... They've gone in my room without permission. And uh, there's a woman that works there that's uh, been seen coming out of people's rooms uh, uh, when they're not home, you know. Right. <clears throat> what did they do? Instead of firing her, they gave her a promotion. Now she's a big, like a boss in a way over there. That's the way the, the, uh, the, corrupt, uh, the corruption is very deep. And I found every effort made to keep it going. Okay. Well, I know that uh, I've had uh, two dozen jobs since the 60s. I've worked on quite a number of different jobs. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I like to rate jobs on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the worst and uh, uh, 10 is the ba uh, best. And my experience uh, dealing with the tenants uh, in, in, in terms of uh, getting money, I rate renting out as a 1. The worst way ever to get money is to rent out to people. It, it, was, it was the worst thing ever. I wish I never even started. It was, it, it was just one problem after another. I experienced all kinds of people living in my house. They were stealing yeah. records, CDs, stealing furniture, not paying rent. I had a guy that lived there almost a year. He didn't pay rent for a year. I had to pay a lawyer $2,000 to evict them because he wasn't paying rent. And I had to run to the court twice. First, the judge sided with him. He said, well, just pay him, uh, you know, a few hundred dollars. And they paid me a few hundred dollars. And they lived again another six months, didn't pay rent. And I uh, never had a problem with paying rent. I always paid my rent. Always, I, I feel that you need to pay your rent. Uh, 
you know, everybody has to pay rent. Even if you own your own house, you're paying rent. Really, you know, you, you pay taxes or whatever. You have to pay. Your, okay, your but rent. I've experienced people that have not wanted to bother paying. <laughs> They'd stay there. The last tenant that stayed in my house owed me something like $800. So what did he do? He packed up and snuck out. He, he just... There walked. are bad people, I know. I yeah, know he didn't are, pay his $800. I I'm said, not one of them. I, yeah, I I'm not saying you, kid, but... When I was a kid, I was bad, and I, I changed. I'm uh, saying that uh, this is a reputation that uh, the, uh, people have that they don't really want to deal with them because they know from experience that some of these people... Uh, they'll try to get away without paying rent, or uh, they'll be stealing stuff. Uh, I didn't have any problem with any of that stuff. I had uh, one of my tenants uh, stole records from me, that, and then he'd I go... Seen, I seen the executive director uh, set somebody up, and then as soon as he gets rid of them, you know, he's pat him on the back and say, you can come back and visit us, uh, you know, for lunch or something like that sometime. He's well, a okay. real piece of work. He's a... Uh, he... he uh, sexually harassed a woman, got caught, and when they found out that it was true, they paid $30,000 to get him off the hook. Can you imagine okay. that? And he had the same problem in Northampton, too. Well, this is a guy that worked at the yeah, shelter? The guy that works there now, Bill. Okay. Yeah, I, I can't say his last name. Right. You're not supposed to say the last name. But, yeah. But his, uh, he's the executive director at Friends of the Homeless. Oh, uh, okay. Well, or, he, unless they changed him. Well. He, he, is, <laughs> he was the executive director. And Pe what a piece of work he is. Well, people uh, lose their jobs all the time. Oh, That's not really I like know. a big uh, issue. Uh, I know. But some of these people uh, that yeah. had qualifications, uh, they, they got rid of them because they had some kind of uh, baggage, some kind of baggage that they, they got rid of them from, from some kind of problems that they had years ago. So well, Many of these people got baggage themselves. You know what? Uh, uh, I believe a lot of what uh, President Obama uh, uh, stood up for. You know, he was very big on children. He he wanted he he liked kids, and I understand that the kids are our future. You know, I donate a lot of things to the YMCA for the for the kids over there. I uh, I'm worried about the the kids. I'm not worried about. The mafia bringing in the drugs, I talk bad about them because I'm worried about the kids. The kids, that's, that's who I'm worried about. They're killing each other. And okay. they're dropping off like flies from that fentanyl or something coming from China. And, uh, you know, I mean, these things are facts. Uh, and, you know, uh, the kids are our future, and uh, we need to worry about them. Okay. It's that simple. Well, uh, some, uh, some of these uh, kids actually are homeless. I've heard on the radio about homeless families, and so they are homeless themselves. Uh, so you're not really like uh, uh, well, at the top of the list. Perhaps yeah. uh, I'm guessing they probably try to help homeless families first, and uh, somebody like yourself, a, a single well, guy, you know, uh, they might... Talk, they, talk, they talk about... Uh, they talk about, uh, uh, you know, well, uh, the Republicans say, well, you know, we go up on the price of uh, education, stuff like that, and the Democrats are trying to get a free ed education. I don't believe that somebody that's poor, his father's mother are poor, that if their kid has got brains that he should go without an education, it's to our benefit. Right. Well, uh, I'm, I'm sure that they have uh, a programs take care of that uh, but what I'm mentioning that's what I'm saying I agree with that I'm a mentioning that, that yeah. there are uh, homeless families that uh, they might uh, put as their first priority so maybe you're kind of down the list so you're kind of focused on yourself being a single guy you said that you don't have any connections you're uh, uh, you said okay, you had yeah, a daughter well, what I'm gonna do is get a lawyer see that's the connection I need okay a lawyer, a lawyer. now uh, I I asked you last time you were interviewed, I said that, you know, uh, maybe you might want to go to a warmer climate or something that way. And that... I told you that uh, you can't run away from your problems, you know. You take them wherever you go. If you, if, you take an, if, you put, if you put an elephant inside of a suitcase and bring them down to California, what's going to come out of the suitcase? An elephant. You're going you, you, you to be with who you are. And, you know, I'd have to start all over. Uh... 
I, I enjoy uh, being who I am. I know the people I know. I like you. I, I like people. Uh, I talk to them. I don't want to start all over, and I'm not going to run away from my problems. Okay. That's not going to happen. Well, it's not just your problem. It's a community problem, and uh, I was going to offer you gonna this. Run. Uh, but you said you weren't interested in anything to do with the Amherst community connections, you said. You know? I don't want to move. But uh, you know, they I might be stay, able I... to help you in okay. Springfield. Okay, listen, I'll, say, I'll tell you what's wrong here. What you don't understand is that I don't want to, uh, uh, I don't want to not go back to Friends of the Homeless. That's where I want to go, Friends of the Homeless. So... Uh, and when I do, I want to have a lawyer because I want to make sure that they're held accountable for what they did. You know, see what I'm saying? I don't want somebody to say, well, look, I'll call up and I'll, I'll make arrangements. I'll talk to so-and-so. You. Once you get there, you get the same problems. They're going in your room. They're doing this. They're doing that. You get the same problems. Once you get a lawyer, all of a sudden things change. So oh, the, the, the power changes. So you're uh, interested in uh, making major changes in the... Uh, accountability. Okay. I want them to be accountable for their actions, and they, they weren't very good. Well, uh... It, they knew I had emphysema when they kicked me out. You know, they, they, they don't care about people. They, they'll they say they do. You know, when we get to court, they're going to try and say they do, but they're not going to look too good. They're going to be a different set of questions then, you know, because a lawyer's going to be on my side. And they're not going to look good. There's no way they can possibly look good because I, I have all the paperwork on uh, those little uh, flash drives. Okay. <laughs> you know, so. So, uh, I, I basically, uh, I'm kind of wanting to finish up the program here. Right. And I, I want to get more information about the... Uh, quote, homeless experience, because uh, you said that yeah. you have places that you stay, you stay outside. Yes. So uh, you've been outside like in the winter time. And wh yes. what's your opinion about this thing I heard uh, that uh, uh, two people in Greenfield died. They were living in tents by well, McDonald's. You know, you, you know, you can, you can, you know there's, there's, there is a, there's a possibility of dying out there, you know. Uh, they know that they 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 hoping that you get really cold and that you suffer and uh, and that you come back and do whatever they whatever they want them to do. That's the that's the motivation for these people to get you to do whatever they feel like you're doing, and they like to treat you like a little kid. That way they can do whatever they want with you. If they put you in a old folks home, you know. Uh, uh, well, you know, hey, look, we're going to have to move you over here because uh, it's for your own good. You know, that's, that's the way they are, you know. Uh, and it's not for your own good. What it is for is for their benefit. That's okay. why they do everything, for their own benefit. Well, I'm not too sure about this uh, old folks' home. Well, cause... That's, that's what they try to do, you know. Uh, and, or they try to give you a trailer or something, anything. They'll try to do anything but but own up to what they did. Okay. You know, that's what they'll try to do, but they're, they're not going to succeed. Okay, well, uh, so you're uh, basically kind of angry about uh, what happened. Oh, I'm elated. I'm, I, I want to have a party because of it. I'm very happy about the whole thing. I want to go have a little tea, tea party about it. Of course I'm angry. I, okay. I didn't. I should have never got uh, kicked out, and I got kicked out. Of course I, I'm angry. I mean, uh, let's face it, uh, this and talking to somebody and saying, well, go back, isn't going to help. My, the, uh, the, it's going to keep the corruption okay. going on. Okay. It's going to keep them doing just what they want to do. Keep it going. Well, this might be uh, good for homeless families because uh, well, homeless, 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 homeless families homeless that family. are looking for a place to stay. Yeah, I'm sure that yeah. there's uh, uh, people that are looking to... Uh, to have a place to stay. Now, what's your opinion about this concept I heard on the news about uh, sending these uh, people that are coming up from uh, Central America and Trump wants to send them to sanctuary cities? Uh, you'll be having competition with that. I think that, with, I, uh, I think that uh, my personal opinion is I think that Trump is uh, really not president material. That's my opinion. I, uh, he doesn't like anybody. He doesn't even like women. He likes them for one thing, but I mean, he doesn't like women. 
Uh, and, you know, uh, he get, painted a picture of these Mexicans all being bad. And, you know, quite frankly, you know, each and every one of us has good and bad. You know, uh, uh, people, uh, I'm Italian, uh, I'm half Italian, uh, there, there is a mafia, you know. Uh, what nationality are you? There are bad people in your, in your nationality too, you know. And, uh, but uh, there's also good people. And you know something? The Mexicans work very, very hard. They're the ones that picked all the strawberries in California. Well, these you are not all uh, Mexicans. They said that uh, now it's primarily uh, families from Central America that's coming up here. Well, he started the problem with all of his uh, baloney about, uh, you know, uh, putting up walls and stuff. Walls are obsolete. You can go under them. You can go over them. They go through them, you know. Uh, we just had a guy... Uh, dig a hole underneath right where the jail cell is and get, and get a guy out of jail. Then they put him on a, on a motorcycle that's on a railroad track that can't hit the sides of the wall so he can escape. Yeah, that was a it, famous uh, yeah, story yeah, that yeah, was it, on it, the it, news. It, yeah. it really happened. Yeah, and I, I heard about that. I'm just saying these things can happen. You know, they could, they could run a train under his wall. You know, I mean, the whole thing it is is uh, all you need is money, and believe me, they have money. So what I'm uh, asking you is Drones that... Drones is the way to go, drones. Uh, uh, what I'm asking you is, uh, say you have a thousand immigrants wanting to get in your building, Friends of the Homeless, do you well, think I, that they would be well, uh, prefer you over the uh, immigrants? I don't know what they would do. Well, I'll say, I'll say this. Uh, they, he says that they, they're coming in to take advantage of the welfare, this and that, all that, but let me tell you something. You go around... Uh, just maybe North Hampton if you want. Walk down the street. Are any of those people Mexicans? They're Americans that are begging out there. Right. Those are Americans. You know, most of them, those people that are doing all the begging are Americans. These Mexicans are hard workers. They really are. And what I think you should do is give them a green card. Give them a green card with an option of, of uh, trying to become a citizen. Uh, you know, uh, uh, instead of what he's doing, you know, he hurt 800,000 Americans. You know, those are Americans. Those, those weren't even immigrants. There weren't even immigrants. Okay, uh, so what you're saying is that uh, <clears throat> we do need to uh, take care of uh, homeless Americans, not necessarily homeless immigrants. I, what, what I think is that uh, th these, these immigrants, this country was built on immigration, right? You know, it's starting with the slaves, and then uh, it moved. Uh, everybody came in after that. I don't know any Indians. I don't know any American Indians. Uh, you know, uh, this country was built on it. What I'm saying is this. They should, he shouldn't be treating these people as badly as he is. Uh, these people should maybe get a green card. They'll probably work. I know a Cambodian woman that I've helped for many years. She works like three people. Like three people she works like. We're very lucky to have people like that in this country. Okay. Very lucky. Okay. You know? and, uh, uh, so you don't... every penny that she gets. You, you don't have any problem with uh, one of these people taking your room over there in uh, Springfield? Uh... If they get the room, you know uh, why? Why shouldn't they get the room if they if they can, if they qualify for it? Okay. You know, I got that room coming. I qualified. They should have never got rid of me to begin with. Okay. That's coming. So uh, hopefully you're gonna get your old room back. Or... I'm gonna get it back. Not hopefully. I'm gonna get it back. You're, you're gonna get it back. So yeah. uh, you're. I, I could have got it back this way, but I'm gonna get it back the right way and make yeah. them accountable for their actions. So you're uh, uh, planning on having a lawsuit here and uh, going through the whole rigmarole. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. exactly. Well, uh, I'm saying good luck with that, that there's uh, probably people that uh, could be helped if you have a, a lawsuit. I'm sure that uh, this could... Uh, Help a lot of people. This could start something that... Uh,
might uh, change things in the United States. Yeah, but the homeless you? problem is a, a problem all over the world. It's not just the United States. I'm sure that, uh, you know, these people in China that are homeless uh, and the Chinese are noted for uh, executing people uh, are there after the Uyghurs that uh, they use artificial intelligence to try to figure out who these I, people I, are? I, I'll say one thing. I, I, I disagree with almost everything that uh, Trump says, but he was right talking about the, the Chinese taking advantage of a lot of countries. They do. Okay. So you might not be uh, uh, too interested in having a Chinese people go over to your place in Springfield. I get along with Chinese people, too. Okay. okay. I get along with everybody. You I get, get along, along with everybody, with... yes. Okay. I, I get along with uh, Puerto Ricans, blacks, uh, everybody. Uh, there's good and bad in every, uh, all, all people. You know, not everybody is a gangster. You know, it's true. It's, it's, very, it's very true. Okay. And I think that the, I, I have never met, I'm not saying that there isn't any, there's plenty of bad Mexicans. But I'm saying I have never met one. And I met okay. plenty, plenty of them. Well, uh, uh, it's... Uh on the news that it's primarily Central Americans that are coming up because of the uh, gangs and stuff uh, that are in Central yeah, America. You know, there's, many of these people are hungry. They want to they wanna work and eat, and they'll, they'll work harder than anybody. Okay. Know? Yeah. These people are uh, they're hungry for work, most of them. Okay. Yeah. You know, he's got them all drug dealers, but that's not true. That's not okay. true. You know, uh... Uh, you know, listen, I've never seen a president that lies more than this guy. And, uh, okay. And, and of all of them. Well, he's kind of sensationalistic, so uh, he'll be uh, saying things that, uh, uh, that gets in the headlines. He's constantly in the news all the time. I think he's uh, in the news a lot more than Obama. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't have the well, statistics. Well, he thrives on that kind of stuff. You know, I mean, he's like... Uh, but you know, I'll tell you, you know, way back when he was telling everybody you're fired on television, way back then I, I didn't like him because instead of saying, you know, well, maybe you could be a, a security guard or a, a, a janitor or something like that, go die as you're at it. It was his attitude, and I, I, I didn't care for him for, after that. You know? Okay. Well, uh, I'm not saying one way or another about the uh, current uh, president because... Uh, uh, in my opinion, uh, a president's basically proposed and the Congress disposes. That's why Obama couldn't seem to get anything accomplished. He was making proposals. The Congress didn't go along with them. Well, I'm not afraid of them. I'll just say that. There's a lot of Americans that wouldn't say crap if they had a mouthful of it. And, you know, they're afraid that some of it would spill out and they'd have to clean it up. But, you know, I don't care what he thinks. Uh, really, I don't care. You know, it doesn't ma make any difference to me because things could never get any worse than they are now. What could they possibly do? Put me in jail? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Well, we're getting off the subject right, here because right. we're kind of talking about Trump, and I, I, I hear well, Trump all I, the time. Well, it's, okay, well, I, guess I, I don't really want to be discussing Trump because it's constantly in the news because I listen to national public radio all and, the time. And, they're, they're, and most people aren't afraid to talk about him anymore either. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's kind of like, uh, it's just too much to deal with. I don't really right, want to be right. uh, dealing with Trump. Uh, anyways, I'm, uh, anyways, I'm sure... I've had problems with all of the uh, government programs, all of them. Uh, dental, welfare, uh, food stamps. Uh, uh, I, what happened was I, 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 I told them, I says, I says, listen, I says, uh, uh, they sent me a letter saying to, the, that I had to register for, for the vote. And I, 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 I wrote on the bottom, I says, it's not, uh, many people I know that that don't uh, that that don't vote that uh, have food stamps, and so they canceled my food stamps for saying that. And you know, I didn't tell no lie. Uh, everybody, a lot of people I know never have voted in their life and, and still get food stamps, so they canceled them. So I wrote a, a letter saying, uh, "Well, what do we vote for anyway?" To pretend that it makes a difference, it really doesn't. They do what they want to do anyway. You know, uh, uh, don't send me any more uh, uh, 
registration forms because I'm certainly not interested in voting. Okay. Well, we have to wrap it up because uh, I, I don't know what time it is. I've been kind of uh, just rambling here with you, and uh, uh, it's been an interesting conversation. Uh, good, good. Uh, I want to uh, make sure that uh, 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 you do swear that you told the truth and nothing yeah. but the truth. Nothing but the truth. I told you, uh, the whole truth. I, I forgot to bring my Bible with me. I was well, going to bring the Bible, but... I swear, I told the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You know, police, they, they take an oath every, every day and lie. Okay. <laughs> in, in court, they do it every day and lie. I tell them the truth. You know, hey, listen, if I only got one life to live, and I was bad when I was young, and I want to be good now. You know, and that's all. Okay. Well, uh, is there anything else that you want to uh, point out about uh, the homeless situation? Because I well, didn't really get too much information about your alternative there's lifestyle. A lot of, there's a lot of people out there that uh, really shouldn't be. Uh, you know, they uh, like I said, they try to they try to make you soften you up by uh, throwing you out there in the wilderness. You know, and then. Uh, have become begging back, and you know what happens in most cases. It does. It won't happen with me. You know, I mean, nothing I said will hurt me. You know, I mean, they can't do nothing to me. But it will happen to a lot of people. You know, so, so uh, you, you, I might have you say exactly what happens when you uh, finish your activities for the day and you're ready to, uh, to go to sleep. Do you uh, make a prayer like, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. No, you know Do you I, make a, a prayer or something? Nothing like that. What I always say is, thank you, God, for another day of sobriety and uh, uh, help, uh, help all the sick and suffering people in the world. And that's basically what I'm doing. Okay, so uh, can you describe your night activity, you go to your special place, and uh, what happens when you go to your special place? I go to sleep. I get so, in a sleeping bag and I go to sleep. Well, so it's just a sleeping bag, you don't use a top or anything? Uh, do you have some yeah, kind of cover? Over, overhangs. You gotta be, have overhangs, yeah. or else you get, get rained on, you know, or okay. snowed on. And different ones. There's lots of them. There's plenty of them. You so know, uh, you don't stay in just one place. No, you kind of move no, around from yeah, place that's to right, place. That's right. uh, so you, uh, you'll you go to one place and then you'll go to another place. That's that, right. Is it like every night that you have a different place that you go or just uh, once a week? or Well, what? you know, whatever I feel like doing at that time. You know, uh, there could be a lot of wind. So I'll have to do a certain way. Uh, there'll, there'll be uh, rain. Uh, with a lot of wind. So I'll have to do it a different way. Then there'll be uh, uh, a lot of rain. So I'll, do, I'll go a different way. There's a, it, it all depends on what's going on. I go with whatever I have to, and I just do the best I can. So uh, I have uh, a subscription to a motorcycle magazine, and they were, had a, they had an article about uh, uh, people camping out, they go on a mount motorcycle and they camp yeah. out and they said that you need certain items to go camping out. I'm sure that you have a lot of items or you I don't do. really have that much. I do. So you have maybe like some kind of a thing that you put on the ground, a mat or something? Sometimes. You know, you can do it that way too, yes. Okay. You can do it that way too. There's a, it all depends on what you got to do. I do whatever I have to do. Whatever I have to do and I do it good. Okay, well, uh, I was just uh, curious because I uh, have this magazine. I was kind of looking at it. I said maybe I should give you a copy well, of I'm this. Well, I'm not interested uh, in motorcycles. Well, so, it's not know, that. It's that. just that they were saying about uh, uh, what to do when you're uh, sleeping somewhere, like on a beach or something. They'll have a picture of the motorcycle on the beach, and they'll have people probably living on a beach somewhere. Of course, this is in the warmer weather. But uh, I'm sure that uh, these people on motorcycles, they you know, go traveling around and you know they... What? I've been I've been homeless long enough, so where I've talked to uh, Senator Neal several times. I got a, a referral from him. It took a long time to get that. And now that's uh, that's in my paperwork that's in that, uh, that uh, flash drive or whatever you call it. And you know, uh, I can tell you this. They're not going to mess with me much because... Uh, 
you know, it'll only hurt them because uh, I've tried too hard to do the right thing and, uh, and, I, and I've gotten nowhere. If I was to murder somebody, I would have a lawyer in a week. Right. You know, but if they do the wrong thing, here it is 10 months later out in the cold and I still don't have a lawyer. Okay. That's some, that's, that's, there, there's some place I can go right there. I'm already in the right track. Okay. Well, we're going to have to uh, end this uh, conversation. I well, really I don't that, know how long uh, we've been going. Uh, we, uh, I think we've been talking almost an hour. I'm not really sure. I didn't probably, really look at the time. Uh, but uh, we, about have, an hour. we about have, an hour. Uh, yeah. so we have uh, a long program here, and I guess we're going, going to uh, have to uh, end it because uh, I used to make uh, programs over here. I tried to keep it either a half an hour or an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I don't really want to go over an hour, although sometimes yeah. when you have music, uh, uh, they have uh, uh, music performances and generally goes over an hour. So uh, I made programs here for about 12 years, so I did make a lot of programs. Uh, uh, I made a program with you, but I made a bunch of other programs in the past. Yeah, no, you did. You're pretty good at uh, it. I, I did uh, a lot of stuff there. I kind of uh, re retired from doing the programs, and I was a little reluctant to do this program because uh, uh, I have to uh, kind of spend extra time. I had to come over here. Okay, are you going to are you going to uh, edit this? Because only you can edit it, he said. You don't have to worry about nobody uh, digitally edit, editing anything. Uh, yeah, I'll have to uh, uh, work arrangements with them to come over here and do this. Of course, this is time yeah. consuming to yeah. do this because uh, I've done it for 12 years. Yeah. I actually have yeah. something like 200 tapes well, that were unedited because well, I uh, it well, takes most, so most, much time. Most of this doesn't have to be edited. You know, uh, this is all good stuff. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll uh, leave it at that, and I'll have to see how things go so here. Stuff you got nervous about with uh, Trump? If you want to add some of that, you can go ahead. You were nervous <laughs> about that, but I, I'm not nervous at all about it. Well, I'm you just saying that uh, uh, there's too much uh, uh, discussion about uh, Trump, and we were trying to... Uh, avoid uh, yeah. that but uh, I am going to point out that if somebody wants to contact you we have the Ouroboros Inner Circle at ProtonMail.com I'd like to get well you know what I'd like to get is uh, 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 another card about that guy from Boston and uh, I'll be happy okay well uh, this is to contact him uh, unfortunately I don't follow email protocol so there's no guarantee that you're going to get a response because uh, generally I don't uh, deal with the computers. I have to go to the library. I actually have a Gmail account. I have over 1,700 emails on there. I'm not going to be sitting at the library for hours on end looking at emails. So say if I have 100 emails, most likely I'm not going to be looking at each and every one. But uh, we do have an email address. I'm not going to guarantee that uh, you're going to get a response. If you want to uh, contact him, have you got a code name you want to be using? The, my friends used to call me Fab. But, uh, How do you spell that? The bus drivers call me Butterscotch Billy, you know, because I give them Butterscotch Billy. Butterscotch Billy, Billy yeah. you want to use that as I uh, just, uh, I don't know. Uh, you got to have a nickname. Well, I'm just yeah. uh, saying, like, if they want to address something on the email and uh, they don't know how to spell your name, so I'm just kind of using uh, uh, this. They said we want to contact, uh, uh, quote, Butterscotch okay, yeah. uh, Billy or, or some other kind of thing there. Somebody says that they... They're going to have a lawyer to help you out, to say you, somebody... Listen, listen. You, you edit this thing and give me a good tape and I'll pay you, okay? Okay, well, yeah. uh, really, we just need to discuss the uh, email thing here. Yeah. So uh, right now uh, we're on the... On TV, so I'm going to uh, just go I'm going to end it here. I'm going to uh, sh shake your hand for the time being uh, here for the uh, interview. Uh, glad right. that we had the arrangements. Uh, uh, we're going to finish up here. I'm going to have to uh, uh, leave here because 
I have to be heading back home probably yeah. in an hour, so I'm going to go home. To, uh, I mean, I'm going to go out to eat and everything. So uh, hopefully we'll have everything all set up. Uh, I, I did editing uh, for for somebody, for a program. Well, that's when you didn't edit. You did good. You did good. You left it the way it was, pretty much. Well, I'm uh, telling you what happened. Yeah. Uh, I, I had uh, uh, a black guy that was uh, a minister, and we went yeah, uh, to do, we, uh, we, we had the minister, and uh, he wanted to uh, have me make the program so we could sell the uh, DVDs at one of his... Uh, uh, gatherings with the, the church people and I said, well, I haven't finished the All thing. All I want to do is help people. You know? Okay. That's, that's where I'm coming from. I, I don't want to, uh, I don't want anything for it. I was offered $1,700 twice to, to, uh, to take the money and to, to, uh, to leave. And I told him no. I says uh, it's not about money. I and uh, this money. is uh, people from the inner circle. No, this is people. Well, this is people from friends of the homeless. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, like I said, there's uh, uh, people that are involved with a lot of different situations, and they're kind of like part of this uh, so-called inner circle. There are people that are able to do things, uh, the inner circle, as opposed to the people on the out outer circle, the ones on the inside, okay? Yeah. okay? Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs>